Let's talk about the conditional distribution associated with the normal distribution. So let, let me let x, my vector x, be equal to x1, x2. And so without loss of generality, we're just going to assume that we want to know what the conditional distribution of x1 given x2 is. So let me write out the answer first. First of all, um, I'm, I'm working under the assumption that x, as we're talking about in almost all of the cases from this section of the class, x is multivariate normal distributed. So I'm going to write out the variance covariance matrix this way. Sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 2 transpose, and sigma 2, 2. So what I'd like to know is what's the distribution of x1 given x2 and we know that it's normally distributed because we mentioned earlier that all the conditional distributions are normal. But what's the variance and covariance? So let me just write out the answers first, and then I'll show you a nifty derivation of this. I, I'll do the derivation just because I like it. So the expected value of x1 given x2 took the particular value little x2 is exactly equal to mu1, okay, it would be weird if that wasn't there, plus sigma12, sigma22 two two inverse, x2 minus mu2. And then the variance of x1, given that x2 equals little x2, is then equal to sigma11, one one, so what we would hope it would be, because that would be easy, just the same as the marginal variance, but of course there's got to be other stuff, um, minus, sorry, minus sigma12, sigma22 two two inverse, sigma, uh, you could either write it as sigma21 or sigma12 transpose. I like to write it as sigma12 transpose. Okay, let's come up with a derivation of this. And um, there's a really clever one. And, you know, I'm not sure how someone figured this out, but it's, it's really, I, I find it really nice. So, and, and in fact, it was a student in my class who showed me this because I was deriving it using um, inverses of partition matrices, which is a lengthy bookkeeping procedure, though not hard. And they showed me, oh, there's a much easier way to do it. And, and, and what she said was, define xz equal to x1 plus ax2, where a is equal to negative sig, sigma12, sigma22 two two inverse. And then what I would contend is that the covariance between x2 and z uh, let's say z and x2 is equal to 0. And let's let's work that out real quick. So the covariance of z and x2 is nothing other than the covariance of x1 plus ax2 and x2, which is equal to the covariance of x1 and x2 plus a covariance of x2 and x2. Okay? So that's equal to covariance of x1, x2 is sigma 1, 2 plus a, which I've defined as negative sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 2 inverse, and covariance x2 and x2 with itself is sigma 2, 2. Okay, so I think you can pretty much see at this point that this equals 0. So z is independent of x2. So the distribution of z given x2 is just the distribution of z disregarding x2 because z is independent of x2. So let's calculate, and we know that z is normal because it's a linear combination of normals. So let's calculate the expected value of z, which is equal to mu1 plus a mu2, right? And the variance of z
is equal to a, the variance of x2, times a transpose, where the variance of x2 is sigma 2, 2, times a transpose. Now let's fill some of this in. That's mu 1 minus sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 2, inverse mu 2. And this is equal to um, the negative sign will cancel out sigma 1, 2. And then I get a sigma 2, 2, inverse sigma 2, 2, sigma 2, 2, inverse. So it's just going to be sigma 2, 2, inverse sigma 1, 2, transpose. OK. OK, so let's think about this. So the expected value of z given x2 is equal to little x2 is equal to the expected value of z, but it's also equal to um, mu1 minus sigma12, sigma22 inverse mu2. OK, so we have that much so far. But we can also write out the expected value of z as the expected value. Remember the definition of z, which we've written up here. And that works out to be, then, that we can write this as the expected value of x1 plus ax2, given x2 equals little x2. OK. So we then can write expected value of x1 ah, given x2 plus a expected value of x2 given x2. So this is the expected value of x1, x1 given x2 plus a expected value of x2 given x2 is just x2. OK, so now take this equation and this equation, and we can solve for the expected value of x1 given x2. Right? And it works out to be exactly the formula that we had above. And then you can use the same technique to derive the variance. So the variance of z given x2 equals little x2. Well, that's just exactly equal to the variance of z since z is independent of x2, since z is independent of x2. And we can write, we see right up here the variance of z is sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, inverse sigma 1, 2 sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 2, inverse, sigma 1, 2, transpose. But then we also know that it's the variance of x1 plus a x2 given x2, because we're just simply writing, rewriting that statement out with the definition of z. And by the rules of variances, we can, we can then apply the um, variance formula and apply the rules of variance and solve, uh, solve again. And I'll, I'm going to ask you to complete the steps for homework.